So this is a foot rest or some people call it a hassock. I don't know all the names for this but you know it's a padded piece you put your feet up and in America there's a billion of them sold and they're cheap and they don't last very long and especially the material. So they're kind of cool because you can store some things in there and I'm going to recover this because I don't want to go pay another $70 and throw another one away. Now, if you have pets, that doesn't help. They're scratching down here from cats, so that's another issue and I need to probably cover the bottom as well. But I'm going to start off by showing you um, that you can recover this top pretty easy. Stay tuned. Padded top, when you take it off and flip it over, it has these corner blocks and they're just screwed in. So I'm just pulling those out. They happen to be Phillips screws. And I'm just backing the screws out, pulling these out, and saving the screws and saving the blocks. Then this material here can actually be reused. It's a covering over the board that's there and dresses it up. Then the material is just wrapped on there and stapled and then this covering re-stapled. Hopefully the padding isn't so far gone that if you need to replace the cushion you can buy cushion at craft and, and fabric stores. I'm probably not going to do that because so fabric could be wrapped over it but if you notice this was sewn and there was even a kind of a felled seam here that had been sewn in there. I'm going to do a similar thing. That's an upholstery seam where the seam was sewed and then fold under and another stitch was put in for added strength and I'll do a similar thing so I'll take this off and use this as a pattern for my measurements. But first I have to take this off, then take the staples out of the vinyl, take it off, and I'll use that for a pattern. Okay, I've got this dust cover off. It's sometimes called cambric, which is a type of cheap fabric for what it was, a dust cover on the bottom of an upholstered piece. A couple of things I wanted to note here, you'll see holes. That enables the piece to, to breathe out air and when it's compressed, air compresses out of the foam and it gives it a place for the air to escape. And that's an important thing to remember about a piece like this that if you ever make one from scratch, you want that aspect to it. Also you'll notice that the vinyl folded over several inches. In this case, about two inches. So you had a row of staples at the cambric dust cover, fabric dust cover. Then you had another row of staples covered up holding the vinyl. So in effect, you had a pair of rows of staples. Really made that attached pretty well. So it's just one little aspect of the construction worth looking at. Okay, I've removed the existing cover. One of the first things I would note is that if you were using uh, new fabric to restore an old piece and the piece was valuable, not a cheap cheapy like this was, then you wouldn't want to go through this exercise and not put new foam on it. Why, why would you do that? Remember my goal here, this is a $50 to $60 item to just go buy new. I don't want to spend a lot of time or money on it or I just make it new from from the get-go or buy a, a nicer newer one but um, I'm gonna work with the foam that I have and put a new cover on it and I want to show you the cover I've turned it inside out uh, it was a cheap leather the seams are regular seam allowances by turning it inside out I can get a good measure across the piece and I can see exactly what it was. This way with the seam happens to be six inches 
that seam was made and then folded over and stitched on the outside with a top stitch like a, a upholstery felling seam. The ends were regular seams turned inside and out. They were laid flat when this was stitched on. The top I was able to measure near to the corners because the sides, the, the middles all tore up and the sides will expand so you can't get a good measurement there. So go to where you know the measurement's good and get it across here and you can see how it's stitched. So just analyze what you're, what you're measuring and you can see seam allowance and all. I can get that measurement very easy in the same thing across this way. That's how I can make the panels pretty conveniently from this existing uh, piece that I've taken off. Now, one other comment I would make is you can see the rounded seam here. That's probably going to come into play again. That's nice and upholstery. The foam has rounded corners, so that makes sense. And another comment too is that when you sew this, if you're sewing on a home sewing machine, you can stitch this. I could even stitch this leather, but the problem is on a home sewing machine, you have to be realistic about how big of thread you can actually run through the machine. And that's the problem with a home sewing machine. It will do this kind of work on a limited basis up to a certain size of thread. Okay, if you look at the piece, there's a top panel and four side panels. And where they meet, there's a seam. That seam is folded down flat against the side, and then I top stitch. So that, some people call that a felled seam. And that's what I've duplicated in the new, in the new cover, which is the way the leather was done in the old cover. And I could zoom in a little bit and show you that effect that that creates. It's more than just aesthetics. By taking that seam and folding it to the side and then top stitching through it, it has extra reinforcement. Sometimes the seam is split open and a backer is put on it and it's top stitched in both places, like auto upholstery. But this is a, a cleaner, prettier look and sufficient for, for what it is. And that extra row of stitching there is doubling the strength because you have this stitching plus the original seam down in here. Okay, while I'm at it, I should show you the inside of the piece. You take the top off, and I did not remove the black leather and all that. It wasn't necessary, at least for my needs. Um, I could have pulled the cambric loose and tucked this and then restapled everything uh, as an even more finished appearance, but all I did was make four panels sew the corners, slip it over the piece. I had excess at the top and excess at the bottom. I rolled the bottom back against itself and stapled. The top I rolled in and stapled, except I did sew a hem for strength and more, a more finished appearance. Now, I just slammed the staples in, but you know you might want to put the staples in a perfect line um, there are black staples you can buy, white staples you can buy. Um, these are just slammed in there, and I, I really don't care. But it does matter how neat you do it. If, if you don't need very many, don't put very many, but m more will hold better. And you can staple through the hem, and really it's very strong. The corners you just roll in the best you can, and these are not uh, perfect. They could be better, but um, they're probably better than the leather that was on there. But as long as this piece fits back in there nice, let's see if I can do this, as long as it fits back together nice, that's all that matters. Um, there was a little compression in that cushion. Uh, a lot of people have a more valuable piece and they'd want to uh, put a new cushion on it. This is not a very valuable piece. You know, if you're going to spend 50 or $60 in materials, you can get a whole new ottoman, so um, you have to think about what are you trying to achieve with this piece. 
but you know, if you to do the best job, you want to replace the cushion and all. This has a little compression in it, but it's really not that bad and certainly adequate for what I want to do with the with the piece. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, I've rolled the fabric out. This is 1,000 denier nylon Cordura type fabric. I got a partial roll cheap on the internet. It's really durable fabric. You could make aprons and tool belts and stuff out of it. It's like roughly twice as strong as canvas would be for half of the weight. So you'd have to go double the weight in canvas to eat any, get anywhere near the strength of this. And this is probably only six to eight ounces a yard. And you'd have to be almost a 20 ounce canvas. So it's an incredibly durable material. Um, there's no substitute for a big flat surface to lay it out. So if you don't have that, do like I'm doing and roll it on the floor. Get a straight line. Then you can square off that line. Measure along the line. Get your increments that you're cutting. I have the two short side panels, the two longer side panels, and the top. So I've made a straight line. I've squared lines. Measured over, made another straight line. Then you can check yourself for square, measure down, lay it all out. I use white, in this case white, Taylor's chalk is a, is a good trick, but any kind of uh, non-marking pencil, fabric pencil, uh, some of these markers that launder out you could use, but you've got to be able to see what you're doing, and then just standard scissors to cut the material. Some materials spray, you have to think about what you're cutting. If it's a uh, sunbrella or something, it should be cut with a hot knife and sealed, edges sealed. This does not fray at all because it actually has a rubber coating on the back. It will not fray at all. Canvas frays, so you might want to cut it with pinking shears or fold a, uh, a hem into it. So you may want to add some dimension to fold a hem into it just so you cannot have any fraying anywhere. So think about what kind of fabric you're working with and just lay it out and cut the pieces. Okay, I'm at my sewing machine and I'm just using a home sewing machine. I used a uh, vintage uh, Singer, 1952-201 Singer. I have two of these I restored. They're not showroom condition, but they're restored to work extremely well. These will take you about as far as a home sewing machine can go. And then you're, if you do a lot of this work, you really need to get an industrial machine with a large motor, something you can run big threads through. Typically in upholstery, you'd want to use a bonded nylon, and they start at 33 weight and go on up to gigantic threads for saddles, horse saddles, and stuff like that. Typically, you'd want to use 46, 69, or 92 for upholstery weight. I can run 69 through this. I just don't have any in white. Um, 46 would work and I only have black in that and I, I want to use white thread. I'm going to use the bonded 33 but I think for this piece and the way we use it this is strong enough. I've got the felled seam. I'm going to double stitch the curved corners so I have a lot of sewing video that I cut out of this. I'm just going to show you some of the highlights but I'm also going to give you a quick mock-up of the actual sewing and how a corner works because I don't think that's evident in any of the video I did. So picture this little mock-up, picture this as a top panel that's over the top piece. You have your side panels that run along the sides and what you want to do at a corner, the sides, you sew right side to right side, you stitch a, a half inch seam allowance this corner then is going to fold open and go around the corner. So the original piece had radius corners, which helps you turn the corner. The square corner is fairly hard to, to sew and makes the piece uh, boxy and less user friendly. And typically in upholstery, you kind of round things off. So it makes it uh, better and easier to sew. So picture a rounded corner, I'll sew this seam, then there's a trick for bending around the corner where when you go to construct this, there's a couple of tricks okay. and I'll show you that. My room's really not set up to, 
to video sewing. I need to be at a different camera angle, but I'm going to try to get this where you can see something of value to you. Picture a panel, side two side panels meet at a corner. You've got right sides to right sides. You sew a half inch seam allowance. So you always back stitch, pull your tails out, any sewing machine, pull your tails out, embed your needle, and you can sew. You'll, you'll, you wouldn't believe the problems that causes you when you don't get enough tail out and get your needle embedded first. Now I typically back stitch for strength to lock the threads and you just sew your seam allowance, back stitch, take it out of the machine, and now trim your threads. Now when you pull those panels open right side out, you have a seam. If you want to do a felled seam, which we're going to do on the top to the sides, I'm not going to do it on the corners because the old piece didn't have it and I like to look better without stitching the corners. But you could stitch the corners if you think it needs it for strength. But a felled seam is where you have now the seam allowance folded to one side and then stitched. So if I stitch that, that's a felled seam. Sort of a half half felled seam. The top has that construction. So if this was the top, and this was a side, it has that construction with the stitching here. But technically, this is two panels. I'm going to show you going around the curve. This is right side up. I've marked a little radius just to kind of kind of remember or guide myself that I want to sew around the corner. And in essence, what happens is you take your top panel on all four sides, you bend it in half. It's an old sewer's trick for finding the middle. You bend it in half and snip the corner. That makes a dart. That makes a dart that tells you the midpoint of the piece. On the panels, before you sew the corners, do the same thing. Bend them in half, snip the corner, then when you go to put the panel on, you can line those two witness marks together, good side to good side. You can clamp them, you could pin them. Some fabrics you can't pin. Vinyl doesn't pin good, so you don't want to pin it. I use uh, office paper clips, these clamp type. Sometimes I use those. Some, some fabrics I'll actually staple with a uh, Aero P22 stapler that's meant for thick bunches of paper. You can come inside your stitch, staple it, and then pull the staples out. And that keeps this all together as a sandwich. But you've got to line it up. And so to get your corners to come out at the corner, you want to find your midpoints. This panel is just a mock-up, so if this was longer, it would have a snip at the midpoint. You'd line it with this mark. And then you can start sewing anywhere you want to sew. You can sew in the middle and come to a corner. Then when you get to a corner, it's going to radius around the corner, and that's the part I want to show you that relief cuts will be made in this. Small relief cuts can be made in this about a quarter or slightly under to enable this to bend better. So picture this as the side panels. This is the top. It's upside down. Well, currently it's right side up, but it's going to sew right sides to right sides and then flip. So I've got to put right side of panel onto here. I'm just guesstimating on this mock up. It would go in the machine. Get my tail behind there. Bury the needle, half inch seam allowance, back stitch. Get to the seam at the corner, you get to where you're going to turn the corner, and you want to fold open this corner. It makes it easier to sew. And then with those snip marks, those snip cuts, you can begin to bend this fabric around. The, the marking I made. Another thing you want to do is on your machine, shorten your stitch length so that you can 
turn that corner easier. A longer stitch length wants to jump ahead too fast and doesn't turn the corner as easy. Right there you can see that the seam is open and, and jumped up on top of my foot. I want to get it under the foot. Reset the foot. Get a couple stitches in it. You can turn the hand wheel. There's no rush. Now is when you're going to start bending the corner and rotating the piece. Like that. When you get so far you might want to bury the needle, lift the pressure foot, and reorient a little bit. And like I say, snip marks near the corner in the two pieces enable them to to have a little bit of relief to turn the corner. The idea is you're trying to bend this around and line it up with this and take off again in a straight stitch. So we'll continue sewing, reorient, and see I'm pretty well lined up here and ready to stitch. Got a short stitch length, so I'll go back to the longer stitch length. Now I'll take it out of the machine, and I'll, I want to reemphasize that you're trying to turn a corner. And I've, I've probably turned a little tighter than I needed to there. I could the, the rad, actual radius was about an inch and a quarter radius. I could have probably done that a little bit wider of a radius. What happens is this corner seam was folded open. That reduces the bulk to sew and it sews nicer. You can come back and run another row of stitching around it. So I could put it back in the machine when I'm all done. Go right over top that stitching. Again use a, a medium to short stitch length. And run some more stitching there. You want to back stitch and lock your stitches and all that. But anyway That's a mock-up of the corner of these panels, and it's inside out. This would fold over. These would fold over and punch out, and you have a corner. And then the felled seam is actually along here, and that's where this has been folded flat to the side and put in the machine and so you have to make sure you get it there fold it under you so that you're actually sewing what you want to sew and nothing else that you don't want to sew so you lift up make sure your seams folded under you I can run some known point like the edge of the foot against the folded seam is a good guide I'll show you an example of that finished look of the felled seam. See, I'm folding the original seam under and stitching the top stitch. Take it out of the machine so you can see it. Now when that's folded open, that creates this top stitch. You can see on the bottom where there's now the second row of stitching is through that seam allowance which is folded over. So you have a, 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 in effect doubled your strength. And it's a nice appearance as well. And it matches the original appearance that the leather had as far as the way it was constructed. And when you go to assemble it and everything, the quality of those corners, I could have rounded better. The way you sew it is going to determine the, the look and fit and finish of those corners. How how accurately you sewed, how accurately you cut the pieces, how nicely you turned the corner. Those are all factors in, in the finished appearance of this. That's why a little practice, if you haven't done this, this is super easy. So if you have access to a machine, this is super easy. It just takes a little bit of practice. Try a mock-up corner like this, then do your piece, and you can get your, your postry box, your box corner, to come out much better because you practiced it a little bit. But don't be afraid to use that radius. As you use that radius, you're going to reduce the, the dimension, but that's good. You squeeze it over your piece when you reupholster the piece, and it all comes out in the wash because it, it compresses the, the padding and the foam, and, and it'll all come out, come out nice. So 
you know, don't be afraid to do that radius. It'll make the piece better and softer corners and it'll fit tighter. So th this is actually uh, too, too tight of a radius right here. I could have turned an even wider radius. Also, any excess bolt you want to trim out of the piece. Um, I don't have my, here they are, here's my scissors. You don't want to get too close to your stitching, but you can trim any bulk out of the piece. Anything that doesn't belong there, like I say, don't get too close to your stitching. Quarter three eighths away from your stitching, but certainly clip the corner off the top panel because you had that original corner. Clip that out of there, and that, that makes for a less bulky corner when you turn the corner. That already looks better than it did a minute ago. And then you can play with it. And you can see what causes various little defects. If you go back inside and analyze how it's stitched and you know whether it was a nice smooth curvature. I hope this helps some people that have never done this before. Air staplers were the best for this. This is a regular stapler. The 516 staples. I'm just going to try to hold a consistent line here. Then I would go to the opposite side, stretch it. take the corner, there's a couple options. You can cut it and get rid of the waste. You can split it. You can fold it. I'm just going to do the envelope fold like so. Do the opposite side though. The middle Sometimes there's more than you want there, so take some of the material away, fold it under, and then fold. Get it flat. Those feet will press there too as well. product creating a nice nice pillowy look there stretching all the wrinkles out of it and just get the last corner here like so and it's going to be something like this original cambric lining at about every two inches which is a lot but uh, probably a good idea but for the sake of speed I won't put as many in Okay, I'll put the feet on and be done. Any number of ways you could do it. You could do the two ends, 
drop it in and see where you're at. But bottom line, you've got to get these these feet back pretty close to where they were. So put those on and we'll be done. Okay. To do the sides, I'm not going to dismantle all this. I could take the cambric off to under the staples, pull this out. There's a cambric box, if you will, out of fabric. A thin bottom. There's corner pieces in here that hold the legs. I just took the legs out. They were just screwed in. And there's hardware in there and then two screws in them as well. And I just took the legs out. I sewed the panels inside out. I pulled them right side out. And I'm just going to slip it over it like this. And I have extra panel enough to roll in and enough to roll down. I'm going to test my fit first. See how I did on my fit. Yeah, you can see how this just line the corners up pretty close like that and then fold them to one side or the other. They have to lay flat. this like that and then roll this in and it could be stapled and, and that'll suffice for what I want to do with this piece and here I just have to pull it out as tight as I can as long as my corners on my top snugly fit down in there and I'll just pull this out as neat and pretty as I can I may go one side first and then the other like that and then pull this out so I think what I'll do though is I'll go to the machine and sew him here that way it's a stronger place to staple and a neater looking product on the inside which really doesn't matter to me but it's not much trouble to sew okay so I sew it a hem on the part I'm going to fold inside that you see. I'm just stretching it over the piece, trying to get the corners pretty close to the original corner lines. It's, it's close, it's not perfect. This will fold under and staple, and inside will fold in and staple, and I'll staple through the hem, which will be strong and just try to keep it pretty looking sort of like that like the old the old one was that's what they did to the leather on the on the old covering so I'll just staple it up I'm going to start by doing the bottom and catching some staples and there's not much to nail to here and this is a thin bottom so I'm going to hit this edge I'll roll this under in the middle a couple of times and staple that like so push that aside to get the foot on. That'll work. Okay, so here's the completed piece. Top done. Neat looking. It's got the corner blocks. I folded in the hemmed edge stapled it along the hem. It's got some strength there. 
Corners are just pulled in as neat as they can be. They were just pulled in, stapled, like so. Pretty much right at the hem line where it's strong. And just did, it, did the best I could with those corners. They look good. They look as good as the existing one was. So then this top drops in and locks in. And uh, heck of a lot better than it was. Thanks for watching.